On this episode of DC On Screen, we are talking all about Peacemaker Season 1, right after these words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome to DC On Screen, the podcast that talks about the DC multiverse on film and television and believes that DC is many things with many tones. We're giving them all a shot here. If it's been released, it is fair game, so beware of spoilers. Welcome to the show. I'm David C. Robertson. This is Jason Goss. Hello. We're talking about Peacemaker. It's so good. Ah, oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... You and I haven't really talked about the show very much, other than to say that it, we're loving it. Yep. Um, probably my favorite thing out of this entire show is what is that helmet? Scabies for all. What does that do? It gives you scabies. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I want to give myself scabies? Test yourself. Yep. Every man should have to go through scabies once in his life. It's good for men to have. <laughs> his dad is such a piece of shit. That's stupid as shit. Yeah. No, he he's awful. Yeah. Chuck him into the bin. Yeah. And I love it. Oh my God. His death scene. So good. His death scene was so fantastic. Um, And I was hoping it was, I I knew it wasn't going to come when Vigilante was in prison. Yeah. I couldn't be happier with him beating the shit out of all those Nazis. (laughs) (laughs) And that speech he gave. About them vigilante? screwing their sister. Yeah, vigilante. The oh, speech no, he, he gave about screwing, he screwing their sisters or whatever. White supremacist. Yeah. Oh, that's him. So good. So good. And oh my God, we found out at that time that like he can really, truly beat some ass. Mm-hmm. And through the series, we find dude can beat some ass. By the way, uh, P- he, uh, James he Gunn. the unrecoverable. But oh my James- God. James Gunn did, uh, <laughs> he did clarify and say that uh, Vigilante's visor is prescription. That makes sense. So whenever he takes them off, he puts on his glasses. Is Yeah, he's got a prescription visor. That makes sense. Um, I, yeah, I loved Vigilante from the, get, from the get-go. I loved him even more when he just kind of calmly takes over for Peacemaker and just like levels that family just like mm-hmm. do, 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 yeah, coming no, no, no. and Let's, let me get this for you pop 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 it's cool um he's yeah. so awkward uh he invited his freaking co-worker to his abortion yeah. just oh my god it's just so yeah. good he's the uh, but you know gun had said and we talked about it on the show gun had said that he hoped everyone watched the intro every week because it gets deeper and more sad as it goes, mm. I kind Even of agree. Same intro, and I'm also yeah. dancing to it every week. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that they have dead expressions because they're all like whether they're butterflies or not. Oh yeah, they're and they mostly are. They mostly are, but whether they are or not, they're all puppets. They're all moving to someone to someone else's hand or strings. Um, Despite their own sadness, just man, I loved it, man. I oh my god, just everybody. The way I cannot believe this show got me to care about Peacemaker, You're right? <laughs> I was so angry with him when he oh, kills no. Rick, and they even do a callback to it a couple, mm hmm. And one. There was a really specific callback about the fact that when he kills people, James Gunn kills people. Mm -hmm. Like, it was not a mistake that there was like a extra beat in the Suicide Squad about the uh, porcelain being in his his heart. Mm -hmm. That was real. They actually killed the actor. Mm -hmm. That was... (laughs) <laughs> they yeah, got a he's, camera he's set up inside dead. of his chest. Um, no, I, I, I love that his dad is in his head. Mm-hmm. It's just like the comics. His, he was haunted by his dad in, in the comics as well, uh, by his dad's ghost or whatever. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed how much they like aggrandized White Wizard as far as the, uh, the power goes. Mm-hmm. And just uh, the mystery of it. Like, what are we going to do going forward? He did actually kill this guy, who is Mm -hmm. the super science guy. I don't know what he's going to do going forward as far as the uh, helmets go. Yeah, I don't know. And And the the suicide squad is gone. Basically, like Iron Man for 
DC Universe as as far as DC, you know. White Dragon, you mean? Uh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> White Wizard. <laughs> I was like, who's he talking about? Oh. <laughs> yeah. That uh, racist son of a bitch was, mm-hmm. basically, <laughs> was basically that. And and uh, I don't know how it's, it's going to change. <clears throat> I loved how I... Like, I had people who were like, how did he fit all of that into his like little mobile home bullshit? He and explained that in like two episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he did eventually, like like the third episode or something. He's like, oh, it's a quantum realm folded into the blood. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that dude, that dude is super capable. Mm-hmm. We shot him in the head as far as that goes. Man. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, like, uh, Abadayo, like, Pretty totally, like, head. I love that. Totally outed uh, uh, the Suicide Squad and her mom. Mm-hmm. So, unless they, you know, do something else with it, like, there's no more Suicide Squad. Like, Task Force X is over. Oh, it's it's done. And so, I mean, I doubt Argus is going to keep bankrolling Peacemaker. Yeah. Maybe they could re- reverse engineer like his house and like figure out like what he was doing, or maybe they already know or have. We do know that, um, or we have heard that Harcourt is going to be in Black Adam, right? So, uh, Steve G said that. So, yeah, she'll be good. It was really fun to see her like convalesce. Mm hmm. God, it was such a good scene. Yeah, she said that, um, in that final. That final bit where um, she she puts her hand on Peacemaker's hand while she's in the hospital and she like rolls the tear, you know, mm-hmm. you couldn't see. But she said as they're shooting her, they weren't shooting John Cena. But when she rolls the tear, he just starts weeping uncontrollably <laughs> in real life. <laughs> Uh yeah, man, that's fitting though. I like it. I I I'm coming out of this thing, and I could not like. I like James Gunn. Had no idea I was going to like this show so friggin' much. Oh dear God! I laughed every time he said Batman was a pussy or Superman uh, eats shit or shit has a shit fetish or whatever it was he said. <laughs> or Aquaman with a fish fetish. Yes, Aquaman screwing fish. Yeah, I enjoyed all of it. I liked it all. I liked every, you know, just bringing up people like matter eating lad. Oh like, God! One of my favorite moments of the show is Mern, like <laughs> trying to low key say like, "Oh, you know him?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he was like Mern being like, "Wait, that's a thing." <laughs> it, it, oh yeah, no, it's he one of my favorite moments in shit. general. Just him trying to low key accept the idea that he actually knows that guy. Mm-hmm. Mm. So fantastic. Good. So or, fucking good. Or the kid in the classroom who's like, wait a minute. So how does Kite Man work with gravity? Shut up, kid. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So you mean like if if gravity had just taken place and he was just gonna fall, that would have mm-hmm. just taken place anyway, right? Okay. Man, it's just it's just such a good show. I, it is. I can't. Um, Even I was the honestly bars. the janitor was good. The, uh, mm-hmm. the neighbor was good. I was low key hoping the the neighbor would turn out to be Batmite. <laughs> <laughs> what I do know is the uh, Batmite reference is real. Mm-hmm. It that's that's canon. Now. Batmite is yep. part of this universe. He is. It's part. It's the Hamadaverse. That might wouldn't be in real Zack Snyder shit. Mm, it's all real. Um, sorry, I'm making fun of those people. <laughs> because they're ridiculous. Mm-hmm. No, it makes perfect sense for there to be aliens and Greek goddesses and guys dressing up like bats. But it's dark and gritty, so it's realistic. How dare they bring Batmite into this and sully the realism of the entire experience? <laughs> yeah, give it time. Like just, just, just sit back and eat your Cheetos there. Give it a fluff. minute. Yeah. What the fuck was uh, Judah Master doing, by the way? Crying and eating Cheetos? I'd, Mostly. Like looking at all. I, I don't know if he has a butterfly inside of his head or if he's just like down for the down for the mission. I couldn't tell either. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what to do with him given the series. 
I mean, James Gunn did say that uh, one of the saddest things to him about the finale was the that uh, Peacemaker was uh, giving Goff the last bit of that that goo. So yeah, they're probably not going to last long after that. <laughs> if, if he's I mean, a butterfly. What would he do? Like, I don't know where Goff's going to go after this. He emptied the jar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've wondered about that too. It's yeah. it's kept me up a few nights. Yeah. And I love that, like, he shot Goff. Or oh, Goff's he didn't host just shoot party. Goff in the head. He could have. He could have shot Goff in the chest, watched Goff crawl out of girl's mouth, and was just like, yeah, all right, we're good here. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, tried to give us peace. We, 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 oh, it's a, kind of my favorite was... part of the entire show is, like, think about the the finale here. Mm-hmm. Him just sitting next to Goff. He, uh, well, won. Uh, rubbed the peacemaker facing the wrong way on his AR. And then mm-hmm. later he's short of that, just sitting next to like an invading species. He did make peace. He actually, mm-hmm. he actually did. Yep. Bless his heart. He did. Yeah. I, I loved his growth. Fuck the justice as, League, character. as he put it. <laughs> You're late dickheads. Yeah. He actually managed. He's a superhero. Bless his heart. Yeah, man. I don't know. I'm very curious about where where this goes as far as like, what 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 the fuck do you do with a butterfly that is out of food, has those kind of ambitions, but he's keeping him alive. I'm curious for sure. I am curious. Oh man, how much did you love like him having to listen to John Economos like explain why he dyes his beard? Oh my god. And realizing that his words like have consequences and stuff dear god oh, watching god. that actually affect john cena oh my fucking god and uh what's his name oh my god i should know his name steve edgy uh oh my god A fucking great scene mm-hmm. just dear god good scene even all right so the the end battle scene as i'll call it everyone just going in mm-hmm. was so good yes just even the music from the opening scene being used again and a couple of pitches higher. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's that same pitch when they like bring it back down and wind it down. Yeah. The pacing was so perfect. I was so ready for that battle. And like, man, you could ask my wife. I was like, I was on the edge of my seat. I had a big dumb grin on my face, wide eyed. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. Yes, this is so great. Yes. Like, <laughs> as he's like beheading people with his shield. <laughs> oh, it's so oh much fun. Vigilante's having a good time. Yes. 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 That's good stuff. Um, I was a little, I was like, oh God, like Abadeo, like using the, the, the human bullet helmet. Oh, that was good. Oh, also her going all Guntana on the whole thing. Yes. I'm good with that. Yeah. The, she, yeah. Total gun Kata moments for, for her. Yeah. And she was such a badass. I was actually bummed out by the, the bullet helmet thing. Cause she's like, I'll save you. And like, just runs into a wall. Oh, I thought she, uh, given the show, I thought she might have like crippled herself right then. Oh, uh-huh. I was a little concerned. <laughs> I kind of thought that was the, where we were heading, but okay. I was going um, with another, another shot at that torpedo. I love it. I love it. Economos has like that picture of all of them on his desk at Argus headquarters now. Ah, he's good. Like, oh gosh, just so many feels, man. His leg broke me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I went back and kind of tried to make sure that made sense, but I guess I guess it kind of does. What what which part were you not sure made sense? I just thought hopping over that fence that he had done a, a second ago didn't make any sense, but I think he just got a little too uh, I don't know, got a little too aggressive and popped his knee. Uh, it looked like he ripped his leg open. Yeah, yeah, there were bones. Yeah. Um, anyway, I got over all that when he was like sitting by Harcourt's body. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, and drags the helmet to Abadaya. Abadaya. Man, I, I, it was just so good. I, I don't even. I'm not smart enough to describe all the ways it was good. You know, <laughs> like. <laughs> That's fair. I loved. I loved that creepy sheriff. Oh God, he was so much fun. His, God, his. Uh, I guess his uh, like stolen takes after the fact. 
mm-hmm. on episode whatever that was. Mm-hmm. Just glorious. He's like laughing by the corpses. Yeah. Or he does this like <laughs> kind of thing. Oh, God damn it. That dude is glorious. They did such a good job with painting the characters deeply and richly on this series. Right. Everybody on the show, you get a real sense of who they are, why they do what they do. You, I mean, you wind up loving that, or I did, that Peacemaker knows his dad is a racist, but doesn't want to believe it completely, yeah. even though he knows it. He wants to believe um, in the best part of him, but... It's not really there. It's still deeply affected by his dad's shitty opinions of him. Yeah. And oh my God, his thing with his brother. Dear God. And just watching it, I would must like, no, this is his dad's fault. Why would they have like a no, a no rules fight between two boys? Oh, dear God. Like, yeah, if you were a peacemaker, of course you think that's your fault. It's not. Yeah. Uh, That part hurts a lot. It's glorious. It's it's a really good background for a good character. Yeah. Such a solid, solid setup, man, for, for his character. Yeah. I enjoyed and the I, that. I was very concerned they were going to kill Abadeo or kill her, her wife, you know? Oh, yeah. They're, they're fine. They're actually one of the most redeeming parts of that. Yeah. I was very concerned. Mm-hmm. But, uh, man. Oh, I thought they were definitely going to kill her, like, at the very end, of course. Mm-hmm. I was like, don't do it, man. Don't do it. Please don't but do it. That is her mom, after all. Like, she'd have to explain that. And, dear God, in season two, I think we're going to have to explain that. Mm. That's going to be a whole thing. Explain what exactly? How she's not dead. Both oh. of them. Yeah, I think there's going to be some chickens coming home to roost on her out in the squad and her mom. She can't just do that. This is Waller after after all. So, like, there's going to be something. Mm-hmm. I think so. I just don't know what. So, look, man. I mean, there was, like, what, eight episodes? I'm not sure I have a whole lot more on this. Um, I mean, character by character. I'll, I'll give you this. Eagly? God damn it. Oh, Eagly. That eagle made me laugh every episode multiple I, times. I would die for that eagle. <laughs> die. I, like, just in my life for that eagle. 100%. Yeah. Um, Harcourt. Fan-fucking-tastic. I love that she goes through all that at the end. Same thing with uh, Adebayo. Like, dear God, that there's something that actually happens. Uh, mm-hmm. Steve Agee's character. Same thing. Like, there's so much progression for all these characters. And then you have Vigilante, who, as James Gunn put it, uh, is the only character who doesn't actually show any growth. (laughs) I love that bit where he was like, I don't feel emotions like normal people do. (laughs) (laughs) One of of my favorite parts of him was in the the big scene where he, he actually finally gets shot. Oh, darn it. And he just still throws a knife into that motherfucker's face. Yeah. That's so good. His <laughs> biggest concern about getting hurt the entire time is like, if I lose my pinky, I won't be able to walk. Yeah. No. Yeah, you and will. He finally gets to the hospital. And, oh, I'm good. I just fall down, dude. <laughs> He's fine. And then he just nopes off out of the window, like two or three stories out of the way after he's actually finally well. Mm-hmm. Like he... Look, he may be some fuck off character who has no social restrictions whatsoever, but that motherfucker might actually be one of the most uh, badass motherfuckers in the DC universe. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> he's, he's pretty badass. I don't know. I like him. I like him a lot. He's he's really funny. He's kind of pathetic and lonely, and uh, but also seems to be kind of a sociopath. Yeah. Oh, the, that moment when he gets in the, oh God, when he gets released and gets in the car with uh, Harcourt and, and finally says, like, I think I made, I made it worse. Oh, dear Just God. Just starts breaking down, dude. Yeah, the emotion there. Mm, so good. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't think he's an absolute sociopath. He actually has emotions. Even then, before that, in the episode where he just tells that guy, like, you're a bad dad. Mm-hmm. And by mm-hmm. the way, before that, when he just beats the fuck out of a couple of white supremacists, oh, also good. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely got emotions. He's just a little off with them. He is. He is. <laughs> I thought that Chip was his best friend. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deeply charitable character. I will call. <laughs> and the one who releases golf after a while, after uh, mm. everything that happens. Yep. Big fan of the show. I'd like to watch it again, uh, in fact. And uh, <laughs> everybody was just so good on the show. The uh, the I can't remember her name, the Asian cop, who's like... Oh what, Lucy Liu because I'm Asian. Okay, oh, and she God. starts calling, and yeah. then she's like, oh, just she keeps keep calling, calling them white guys, white guy names, and then she's like, I'm not like, like white Matt guys. Damon, whatever, I've run out of white dudes. <laughs> so good, so fucking good. <laughs> and yep. not to, you know, not to take anything away away from him. Like Terminator's role was really good too. <laughs> Terminators. <laughs> yes, Robert Patrick did a very good job <laughs> of playing a very shitty person. Yes, he did. He did. Of course, you know i I think of him more as Agent Doggett from the X Files than I do as uh, than I do as uh, whatever it was T one thousand maybe. I think it was T one thousand, but I'm not sure. You know, it's been like thirty years since I've seen this film. I'm still very curious about how he like pulled away and said, "Well, I'm gonna get my dick sucked and then kill my son." Yeah, and that one guy was like, "Yeah, sounds great." I don't know. It sounds like you're undermining everything he's told you before. mm Hmm. But then apparently he does actually do those things. Yeah. I don't know. Which was unsettling. It was. He was He was an interesting character. And I'm kind of curious to see if they uh, bring him back because, oh, among other things, like one of the most heart-wrenching moments was him talking to his, you know, dead dad now mm-hmm. in the woods and uh, just having him on the porch. Like, what do you do? What do you do when you're in that position? You, you've you've got your dad. You've got all of that. And that's that's the situation. It, uh, through your dad's mechanisms, you, you killed your own brother <laughs> and shot him in the head. And now you're going to sit with him on the porch as a uh, middle construct? I mean, it didn't look like he was happy about it. He doesn't look happy about it. I feel like we're going to see him again, though. His dad looked happy about it. You know what cracked me up, though, is his dad looked more, I don't know, complacent than he had been before. Mm-hmm. Like, as a dead man, his father might be a better father. I don't think so. Yeah. At the very least, he'll warp him into some kind of idea of something that's a good mentor. Hmm. I do, I do like, one, I do like it that... They're bringing the the dead dad in to like haunt him because that did happen in the comics. Yeah. But <clears throat> except in the comics, he watched his dad commit suicide, so I don't. His dad wasn't the white dragon, but um, I like it because it would seem it it would seem a little quick, a little unearned, if you know he kills his dad, he purges the fixation, and suddenly he doesn't have all these hangups anymore like i kind of still need his dad there to be like you know warping him and, and talking to him and his you know like my parents aren't dead but i hear shitty things they've said to me all my life in the back of my head yeah and sometimes it, it, it informs my decisions and informs how i feel about myself oh yeah no that, that's a real thing not to be a dick about my parents specifically. All parents do that shit. Everybody's human. You say shit to your kids that, you know, winds up not turning out well. <laughs> Sounds a little worse than you thought it would. They take it a little differently than you thought they would. I think it happens with everybody. Yeah. My ambitious goal with my daughter is to fuck her up as least as possible. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give it my best go. Yep. I can, I can envision, you know, if I live long enough, you know, running into your kid at Walmart and her's being like, Ugh. I mean, you know how my dad is. He's a total asshole. And I'm like, a little bit, but I love him. <laughs> oh, I, get I get it. I get how, but you know, he says shit like this. You'd realize that he doesn't really mean that. No, no. He's just a, such a dick. Mm, he, give him a, give him a chance. He'll come around. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll try to stick up for you. I love the idea of like, no, it's fine. He'll say something redeeming eventually. He'll get around to it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) At some point. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Oh, God. Yeah. Mm. By the way, did you know that um, Jennifer Holland, the person that plays Harcourt, is James Gunn's fiance now? I did not. 
They, they've been together for years and they just announced their engagement today. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I did hear some of that on the podcast. Uh, Podly podcast. Mm. Yeah, I was kind of shocked by that. I was like, well, I'm glad I didn't realize it before because then I'd be like, oh, she definitely ain't going to die now. <laughs> it was a well-timed announcement. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, he's not going to kill her. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. That'd be all right. As Bernie Mac always said, come on, America. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I loved that show. Did you ever watch the Bernie Mac show? Mm-mm. <laughs> he would just he would talk to the camera he'd be like these damn kids come on America <laughs> he was funny that was an enjoyable series um well she got a peacemaker man I mean the action was great mm-hmm. I had to listen to that opening song more times than I can count I have been yeah I've been uh introduced to several things I didn't I didn't know about that I now know about several bands. <sighs> Me too. And, um, uh, dear God, a lot of my, a lot of my eighties holdbacks have stood true. Mm-hmm. It's mostly been the 11th street kids and, uh, and that song, which isn't really an 80s song that have, uh, actually gotten into my playlist. That was the name of the song. What was the name of the band? I don't Rocks. remember now. That's right, Hanoi Rocks. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's a fantastic song. It actually is. Yeah, like a lot of the stuff is like 2001 and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Wigwam is from 2001. Yep. Which I didn't even, like I'd heard their name, but I didn't, I didn't really listen to it. So. Oh, I'd never heard shit. Cracks me up. I, it In retrospect, it reminded me of like Buck Cherry or something that was trying to be like 80s metal while we were listening to... You know, TRL. Mm-hmm. Seeing where Brittany was. Yeah. While we were sleepily rubbing the uh, the grunge crust from our eyes and looking at a world full of uh, yeah. red pleather. And that that was only a couple of years after I remember seeing, <laughs> oh, God help living me. La Vida I remember Loca. seeing, like, living, yeah. Living La Vida Loca. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And thinking, oh, this is going to be a thing. Just like all of a sudden there were groups of, of guys singing together and most of them had dated Jennifer Love Hewitt at some point. And of course. Yeah. <laughs> and one guy in the group was always gay and there or suspected to be as such and then confirmed later. Only a matter of time. I mean, you know. And good for him. That's fine. I don't care. Doesn't bother me. But I don't think there's anything wrong with that. There was a, a very serious... Uh, <laughs> John Mayer feel to a mm-hmm. lot of that. And uh, yeah. uh, honestly, I, I saw him later live and thought, Jesus, this guy fucks. He sucks? He fucks. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. He can play guitar. Yes, he can. Jesus fucking Christ. John Mayer can play a fucking guitar. I will shout that from the rooftops right now. Yeah, I saw him. Uh, I saw him open for Blues Traveler at like a Jubilee City Fest in Montgomery many years ago. <laughs> Such a funny series of words, but yeah, I know. I like Blues Traveler. Oh, I saw him at a Birmingham City Stages at a sidebar where you had to walk over to it. Mm-hmm. There were crawfish in the background. Of course, there were. Of course. I the first time I saw Bob Dylan was at the Birmingham City Stages. Mm-hmm. I was there. Oh, God, where are you? Mm-hmm. You remember the guys screaming, Hurricane! Sing Hurricane! <laughs> I don't think he ever did. I did, <laughs> but he didn't. Oh. But that was the movie that year, so... Uh, man, yeah. Shit, dude. <laughs> I wish I'd known you were there. Oh, uh, before him was Jamiroquai. Oh, God, yeah. It was It was a really pleasant time in, in Birmingham's, you know, history of actual guests yeah uh i forgot about jamiroquai mm-hmm. i loved virtual insanity oh here's the fun part me and michael were standing over there in the background watching that and uh michael had played with his band shelton just uh, a few stages over well a few mm. hours before that's neat wow anyway um <laughs> the guy who does our interstitial music Yes, he does our interstitial music and helped you with the opening intro music Mm -hmm. uh, for the show. Mm -hmm. And whom, for 
for this is well below him. Mm-hmm. No, he did it because he's a good bloke. Yes. <laughs> he did that shit out of the kindness of his heart. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, I if I had time, I would rewatch all of Peacemaker right now, like beginning to end. Yeah. Yeah. I do not have time because I got to catch up with some CW shit. I don't either. But I have watched a couple scenes over and over again. Mm hmm. Including the last episode, of course. Mm hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, my fucking God. So good. Do you want to punch that one tooth on the cow? No, I felt bad for the cow. Really? Yeah, it kind of did. Yeah. It is kind of an innocent. It looks so sad. Mm hmm. It does. And the the what the thing was shocking them, you know, the things, the little rings. Mm, that's I, I fair. Felt really, I felt really bad for the cow. That's fair. I don't know what it is about that one tooth. Kind of wanted to punch him. I mean, the one tooth kind of reminds me of a woman I used to work with because she only had like one tooth. <laughs> I mean, she, she also, well, she was in a similar shape that the cow was. Ah. And uh, was really hateful and crazy. It would scream obscenities for no reason at all at all of us. So, uh, I mean, I've done that too, but I, I overcame that and still felt bad about the cow. Like I, kept, I felt, I felt sad I for went, it. I went the opposite way. Like I've had that experience at work with a real human. Never had mm -hmm. any similar thought. That cow on peace came, on peacemaker for some reason wanted to punch it. Hmm. I think that speaks to uh, a violence within you. Possibly. A darkness mm -hmm. that maybe you need to address. Yeah. I'm not proud of this. Do you have you have a therapist, right? Mm-hmm. You need to discuss that with them. Well, actually, no. I'm between. Oh. We're you need to, to find one. Again. And you need to say, look, I saw a CGI creature, and because it had a tooth, even though the creature was enslaved... Mm-hmm. Uh, even though it, just because it had one pointy tooth, I wanted to punch it. And I think I have a problem. Right. And they'll just say, okay, well, here's a bunch of other medications you should take. Right. Because we get kickbacks and you'll be like, sweet, goodbye penis. Yeah. Well, partially they'll be like, cool. Have you finished Boba Fett? <laughs> <laughs> I hear it was good. <laughs> Let's talk afterwards. <laughs> See if, if this is still a real thing for you. I've heard I've heard Fett was good, man. <laughs> Actually, I've heard both. You know, my wife, who largely shares the same opinions I do of Star Wars, was like, oh, my gosh, that was amazing. And then, like, I got on Twitter and saw a couple people being like, that was bullshit. That was meh. That, there was nothing about that. It was Star Wars. And I was just like, hmm, I'm inclined to believe my wife over you guys. You guys are just <laughs> miserable. you should be. And she is also that perfectly competent yeah yeah i would i'd go that way too <laughs> like my wife was like texting me because i was out she was texting me as she was watching the last episode of boba fett and was just like going oh my gosh oh my gosh dude oh my gosh i'm not gonna tell you because you need to watch this but oh my gosh <laughs> and then to like go like hop over to twitter and just to see like this rash of entitled whiny pieces of shit complaining about this thing. I'm like, <sighs> okay. Mm. Like, this all sounds familiar. Yeah. I'll believe the person who seemed to enjoy it. Nope. I trust her there. Yeah. And, you know, she's been rewatching because they're doing the Obi-Wan series. So she's been rewatching the, the original prequel trilogy mm. or the prequel trilogy, not the original anything, but the prequel trilogy. And she was like, <laughs> just like the, the Phantom Menace is so boring. Yeah. There's so much political talk. I'm like, Yes, that's how I remember it as well. Bidet to you. <laughs> Do you remember that bidet to you from Scrubs? Oh, I don't. <laughs> He's like, bidet to you, sir. <laughs> but that, that does sound familiar. I also had this experience with Scrubs sometimes where I'm like watching an episode mm -hmm. and just, uh, I remember the rest of it more than I would like to remember the rest of it. It's mm -hmm. It's been kind of fun to... Do like a little bit of a rewatch, but mm, I do know that series. It doesn't actually surprise me. It does surprise me. I'll, I forget things too easily. There'll be really good bits where like I'll come in and they'll be playing and I'm like, oh, I remember this. He says this and this next. And then like other bits where I'm just like, I'm cracking up because I'm like, I did not remember that shit. You know, so. Yeah, I get that too. Anywho, uh, you want to wrap this? 
Sure. Do you want to? Okay. Because I don't really know what to say about Peacemaker other than just like I love the whole thing unequivocally and uh, think it was a masterpiece. I'm glad it's part of the cinematic universe. And uh, <coughs> yeah, I want to see Batmite. <laughs> um, on the Podly podcast, he insisted that that was that was that was real. Now, Batmite is a part of this universe. Yeah, it should be. Also good. By the way, you guys don't don't believe every person on the internet because like I saw people who were posting screenshots where they had like lightened it up and it was it wasn't Superman it was Supergirl because there you could see a skirt and um I mean the 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 double was dressed as Superman the double who posted on Instagram was a dude and he was dressed as Superman the person who posted the thing about the being Supergirl was trying very hard to convince us that this was supposed to be post the flash where they've erased Batman Superman and Cyborg and Supergirl from the flash is there so even though she doesn't wear a skirt in the flash movie yeah so just I've already seen way too many people believing that and <sighs> saying it was, you know, absolute proof of they're erasing the Snyder We don't know what they're no. doing, man. We have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, even that. Uh, Gunn said it was really hard to arrange that. Uh, but mostly just a lot of fun for the two people who you actually saw take lines. Mm-hmm. It's still so much fucking fun to actually, to actually like, see that live. Mm-hmm. I did get to catch that with no spoilers, and oh my god, that was fun. Yeah, I did too. It was so funny, like, <coughs> so funny to see, like, the amount of people who felt like that was basically the same kind of humor as Whedon's Humor in Justice League. And I was like, eh, no, because, like, the humor in Justice League was at the expense of the characters, at the, it was like, at the expense of the actual characters. Like, the, the joke about Aquaman screwing a fish is not a real joke at the expense of him. It's a joke at the expense of Peacemaker because he believes everything he reads online. Yeah. And even Barry playing with it is just kind of a uh, him playing with that thing. Yeah. And yeah. Barry chuckling and saying some shit, you know, and there's. <laughs> I don't know. I there's there's a, a tendency among many Snyder fans who uh, the, to uh, say, oh well, this is this is you know this is just like Joss humor because it's dirty. No, it, does is, does it feel more like something is definitely bleeding, or does it feel more like Zack Snyder posting a picture of Batman eating Catwoman's pussy <laughs> in support of the Harley Quinn animated series? Which one does Honestly. it really feel more like? Mm. Honestly, I kind of I mm. I like both. It wasn't a terrible joke to begin with. And the second one was fantastic. I just, you know, man, I like humor. And I like dirty humor. I like dick jokes. I like pussy jokes. Mm -hmm. um, I like weird sexual jokes, which James Gunn does really well. That whole, the whole bit, the whole, the whole bit about Aquaman paying some dude to have sex with a sturgeon. Right. Is funny as shit and weird. Um, yeah, <laughs> just like, and also I'm pretty sure Peacemaker in that regard, you know, believing everything he reads on the internet kind of is my dad. <laughs> and he's just like, they said it. Who said it? The news. Who's the news? Well, I read it on Facebook. Dad, that's not the news. No, but I searched for it. And then he pulls up Facebook and searches. <laughs> yeah. It's like, dad, that's not the news, buddy. Yeah, it says right here. Superman uh, has a poop fetish. Yeah. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> this guy, uh, Alex Jones, said it. Yeah. He looks like a reporter type. Look at him. Mm. Reputable. <laughs> that feller. Anyway. You good? You want to talk about anything else? Yeah, I think I'm good. All right. Love it. Love it so mm -hmm. much loved it uh, if you haven't seen peacemaker go and check it out and uh, you know i was i saw james gunn saying that he was gonna have to change the opening next year because most of the people in the opening are dead oh yeah <laughs> that's a real thing uh-huh a lot of butterflies in that. that's that's a good point that's a good point i'm kind of sad because my daughter and i love that song but it'll be all right mm. look he got us this far 
I'm just going to roll with it. I trust it. I trust it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, we're going to try to get either one of us or both of us will try to get some uh, TV reviews <laughs> out. You're so behind on CW. I don't know what what could be done. But uh, Most of. But, you know, there's parts. Stargirl, for instance, I'm on. I'm done with. Mm, yeah, I'm done with Stargirl. We should probably talk about that someday. Mm-hmm. Post it as a as an episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my favorite episode, or my favorite character ended up being Shade. Oh, he was fantastic. Wasn't he great? He was fantastic. Um, but yeah, man. We're going to go. And uh, until next time, give some DC on your screen. Bye-bye. Our intro music is by Jason Goss and Michael Shackelford. Michael's band, Galactic Engineers of Magnetic Sounds, or GEMS, can be found on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. Visit DCOnScreen.com to find our Patreon, merch, contact information, and every episode of the show for free, including crossovers we've done with other podcasts. DC On Screen is a maladjusted production. For more from me and Jason, including sketch comedy, vlogs, parodies, and our improvised web series, Hey Guy, visit maladjusted.tv.